today we're looking at a build that I did back in September featuring the Ryzen 1400 from AMD and the GTX 1060 6GB from the brand Gigabyte. Now this was a build I did back in September but I wanted to do this video to kind of benchmark it and see how it kind of just held its ground against you know just, just regular 1080p gaming but also what kind of benchmark it makes for processors altogether with the new Ryzen platform. Now this was a $950 build that I built back in September, like I said a little bit earlier, called Iron Winter. If you want to see the build video, it's over here. It's probably one of my proudest pieces of work and art that I've put onto the channel. So I highly recommend you guys check that out. Now there's no script today, there's no notes, there's nothing. I'm just going off the tip of my tongue and just saying what truly needs to be said about the uh, desktop market. And I think it's come a long way since March because that's when Ryzen launched. The Ryzen 7 processors were launched in March and that changed everything. Well, at least for now. So what we have here is a comparison between the Ryzen 1400 and the Intel i7-4790K. Now I know what you might be saying, whoa, dude, that's a fourth gen processor. That processor still holds up very well to today's tasks and is probably one of the best processors still on the market in terms of price to performance since you can get it for about $265, which alternatively you could get an 8600K for that price, but that would be MSRP, not what you actually pay for it, which is around $300. So my statement still stands. Um, the way the 4790K holds up, is that it still has incredible IPC and the gap in performance between the 4790K and the 7700K is actually not that much. So I think it's still a good processor to compare with. I will update this in the future, but if the Ryzen 1400 can at least compare to the 4790K, I think we have a very solid processor on our hands. Now, obviously, uh, Intel processors all around have one step up over the entire Ryzen platform so far, and that's the clock speed. And that's a significant factor, but a factor that uh, AMD had to consider when making a well-balanced chip with thermals and uh, power consumption and all these other things that they had to balance between. So they made a good blend and they still squeezed out a good amount of uh, clock speed out of their processors because of it. But we're still going to compare different speeds and also the same speed to get a more apples to apples comparison. Now, these comparisons are made with the GTX 1060, uh, six gigabyte version of the 1060. And that is, you know, something that you might not consider when comparing processors. Now, the thing is, is I know that if you put a higher end graphics card like a 1070 or 1080 or 1080 Ti, or 1070 Ti, I forgot that came out. Um, you can see that those would obviously push out more frames than the 1060 at 1080p resolution. And then yes, you would see the Intel processor really excel there. But, um, you know, how much can you notice with your eyeballs? I mean, you know, once you're passing like 100 frames per second, the, the gap in, in smoothness on your screen, as far as the refresh rate goes, really isn't that much. I think from anywhere from 100 to 144 hertz pretty much almost looks the same versus uh, the gap where you have 60 hertz and 100 hertz. That's that's a huge difference. So it, it's not the same way you would compare those different types of refresh rate margins. So that's something to consider. But the point I'm trying to get across is that I'm dealing the 1060 for the 4790K and the same for the Ryzen 1400. So I'm dealing the same cards. You know, I have a 1070, but the thing I'm comparing is the 1060. All right, let's just get that over with. So let's get into the benchmarks and let's discuss how the gaming performance is and also just the raw CPU performance. And I didn't do a whole crazy amount of uh, benchmarks like you would see from like Tech Deals or um, Gamers Nexus or Hardware Unbox. Those guys are. Those guys are top notch. Unfortunately, I did not have the time or the resources to do more of those benchmarks. I would have liked to, but I don't. But it's not so much just comparison benchmarks that I wanna talk about. It's just the straight up comparison of what the wallet is worth. Is it worth more towards Ryzen? Is it more worth towards Intel? So yeah, let's get into these benchmarks. All right, I got them on my phone.
So first we're going to load up Battlefield 1 and of course we're going to have 1080p ultra settings with MSA off and here we have the Ryzen 1400 at 3.2GHz and the 4790K at 4.4GHz. Now this is just the clock speed it runs at. I know on the box it says it's a 4GHz processor but uh, I literally leave it on auto in the, in the BIOS settings and my Gigabyte Z97 board automatically runs at a 4.4, no problem. Now, uh, the average is about 88 frames per second for the 1400 and the 4790K is about 87 frames per second. Now you're probably wondering to yourself, well, that's probably just because it's limited by the GPU. And yes, you're probably right. But let's see what those 1% lows and the 0.1% lows, because that has a little bit more to do with the CPU as well. Um, so we have 48.38 frames per second for the 1400. And we also have 63 frames per second for the 4790K. So we see that um, the average is about the same, but that doesn't tell the entire story. The 4790K has a much narrower gap than uh, the 1400 between the 1% low and the average. And that kind of shows what your frame times are, how much stuttering you're going to get, how many frame drops you're going to get. And the Ryzen 1400 has more of those frame drops. Now the 1400 has about 41.93 frames per second versus 54.97 frames per second for the 4790K. And we can see that gap is still relatively tight compared to the average. So uh, the Ryzen processor is relatively on par with the 4790K when dealt with the GTX 1060, six gigabyte version. And it seems almost the same, but it's not because the 1% and the 0.1% lows are a little bit worse than the 4790K. That might have to do with the IPC. It might have to do with the clock speed. It might have to do with memory allocation and the caching, but we don't know what it is specifically. So let's move on to the next. We have Metro Redux, uh, Metro Last Light, if you guys probably know what that game is. And for the 1400 at 3.2 gigahertz, we had 125 frames. And for the 4790K, we have 130 frames. Now the 1% low has the same kind of trajectory as the Battlefield 1 results. It is a little bit tighter on the 4790K between the 1% low and the average versus what the 1400 has at 82 frames versus the 98 frames for the 4790K. So the 0.1% low is really tight on the 4790K. That can be just due to the environment that was being rendered. It can be a little bit different of a scenario, but regardless, the frames from the average and the 1% low are still tighter on the 4790K. So we're seeing a trend here. The 4790K has a little bit smoother of a gaming experience. Now for PUBG, I ran the 1400 at 3.9 gigahertz and also the 4790K at 3.9 gigahertz to get a more apples to apples comparison. And you might be asking, well, why didn't I run 3.9 gigahertz for the other benchmarks as well? Well, one, I didn't have enough time. When we're dealt with the same cards, uh, the 1400 3.2 gigahertz runs at 55 frames. And at 3.9 gigahertz, it's still 55 frames. So there's really no boost in performance there. And uh, the 1% low is about 37. And at 3.9 gigahertz is 35. And that can be just within margin of error. But... Uh, the 3.9 gigahertz overclock really doesn't make a difference. Now the 0.1% lows we can see uh, are pretty bad. We have 26 frames per second and 32 frames per second. So the 0.1% low is a little bit better. So we're getting a little bit smoother of an experience for the 1400, even though we had two frames less on the 1% low. Now in comparison with the 4790K at 4.4 gigahertz, we have 52 frames or almost 53 actually, but uh, that's still lower than the Ryzen 1400. And at 3.9 gigahertz, it's even lower, which is a more apples to apples comparison. So this is showing that the bottleneck is actually not the GPU and actually the CPU, since we have more of a difference here. But uh, let's see what those 1% lows and what the 0.1% low is. And for the 4790K, it's 39 frames at 4.4 gigahertz and the 0.1% low is 38. And the 1% low at 3.9 gigahertz for the 4790K is 35.4. And the 0.1% low is 31.35. And those are relatively tight within uh, comparison to the average frames per second for the 4790K, both at 4.4 and 3.9 gigahertz. But regardless, 
it is still almost the same amount of gap, but a little bit more narrow of a margin between the 1% low and the average. So you might be getting a little bit smoother of an experience with the 4790K, but not really. You still get a better frame rate at the uh, with the 1400 at 3.2 and 3.9 gigahertz. But uh, with that being said, uh, there is still stuttering apparent on both of those. And PUBG is still a beta game. It probably will always be a beta game. Now to draw more conclusive results with more of the synthetic benchmarks, we have Time Spy with the physics score. We have the 1400 3.2 gigahertz at 3,463, the 4790K 4.4 gigahertz at 4,603, and for more accurate representation, we have the 4790K 3.9 gigahertz at 4,267. So let's move on into the Fire Strike physics score. So for this, this is pretty interesting. The 1400 at 3.2 gigahertz and the 4790K at 3.9 gigahertz is almost the same. And that's without overclocking the 1400. But it is interesting to see that the scores are relatively pretty close between the 1400 and 4790K, even with a 0.7 gigahertz uh, clock difference. So that's pretty interesting. Now for Cinebench, we have the multi and the single threaded score. So for the 1400 at 3.9 gigahertz, we have 821. And for the 4790K at 3.9 gigahertz, we have 788. Now for the single threaded performance, we have 153 for the 1400 and 160 for the 4790K. This is actually really interesting because uh, the multi-thread score is less on the 4790K when compared at the same clock speed, but the single threaded score on the 1400 is a little bit less than the 4790K. So they kind of just swap places a little bit there, but that shows you that the IPC is really good. The individual core performance is showing some real strength here because the 4790K has absolute stellar single core performance. Now for the results for CPU-Z, we can see that the results for this is pretty close to what we had in Cinebench. So at 3.9 gigahertz, we saw a score of 2374 for the multi-thread and for the 4790K at 3.9 gigahertz, we saw 2049. And for the single threaded performance, we saw the 4790K dip well below the 1400 at 438 for the 1400 and 361 for the 4790K. And that's pretty crazy to me. Now CPU-Z already has uh, some sort of pre-recorded benchmarks from uh, different processors. And according to their program, the 7700K at 4.2 gigahertz has a score of 2648 for the multi-threaded performance. And for the single threaded performance, we have 492. Now we can see the 1400 creeping up there at 438, which is relatively close to 492 since the uh, there's a 300 megahertz difference in clock speed. So if that clock speed was the same, we could still see relatively close IPC performance, even when compared to the 4790K and the 7700K. So this kind of concludes my results. The 1400 is a very, very powerful processor. It's just undermined by its clock speed, but so are a lot of the AMD Ryzen processors. But that doesn't mean it's a bad processor and not everyone is comfortable with overclocking their Ryzen processors. And another caveat with overclocking is that you have to have uh, Ryzen certified RAM and RAM is expensive and finding the right kind of RAM with relatively low latency and a high clock speed, since Ryzen favors high clock speed, is still difficult to find. And it makes overclocking a little bit of a challenge because if you're trying to use a set of RAM that has uh, does not officially support the AMD Ryzen platform, it runs into a bunch of boot loops. That's one of the caveats with the AMD Ryzen platform. So you have to make sure you get the right RAM for that. The Ryzen 1400 comes in at about $160, I think, MSRP or $150, I can't remember. And that's quite a deal compared to what the 4790K has to offer, although the 4790K is still superior, even though we saw uh, relatively close IPC performance and whatnot. Uh, that can be overclocked to like 4.8, 4.9 in some cases. Some people said they got it to like 5.4 gigahertz. It's an easily overclocked chip and uh, that, that really gives it a leg up on the competition when it comes to Ryzen. 
Now, that is the thing that it suffers from, but like I said, you don't really have to worry about that because it still performs well at 3.2 gigahertz, and we saw that in some of the benchmarks that even at 3.2 gigahertz, like in the Firestrike score, was close to what 3.9 gigahertz was in the 4790K. Ryzen 1400 has a lot to offer, and I think it kind of speaks on behalf of the rest of the Ryzen platform processors. And this is huge, it's monumental, because the whole entire history of desktop processors has been something of just stagnation. And that is a problem because you want to invest into something that games well, renders well, edits well, and is just an overall well-performing chip. And I can safely say we now have options. And thanks to AMD and Ryzen, we have those options. Whereas before, Intel has not given us those options. Even with the whole entire Coffee Lake lineup, which is supposed to be the more budget-friendly oriented lineup, uh, is not really what it is. They're trying to compete, but they've made a market that is so stagnant in terms of production that the costs are all inflated. So you end up paying for those processors of what it would be even if there was no AMD competition. Where are the H series boards? It's been a couple months. I think October they released and now it's December and still no H boards. When Ryzen released, they were all out there on the table. Uh, AMD did their part and they did it very well this year and I'm excited to see what the Zen Plus architecture brings and what kind of compatibility we have for the future as far as memory goes and future motherboards and what we can push out of the new processors. I know with the Zen Plus architecture they're probably most likely going to be pushing the clock speed on these processors because that's what they really need and these motherboards that you buy for the Ryzen platform now will be good for the next couple of years. Intel's Coffee Lake processors and those Z370 boards will not. Whether or not they change that, I don't know, but we know for sure that the Ryzen platform motherboards will have an upgrade path and offer a very good value even right now and will be good for the next couple of years. So welcome to the Ryzen family. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you found it conclusive and a good reflection on the whole entire year and the past history of the last couple of years between desktop processors and where they have been and where they are now. I hope that gives you some sort of closure for the year 2017 and makes you excited for 2018 like I am. I want to thank you all for watching. If you want to see more videos like this one, consider subscribing. My name is JD and thank you all for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.